Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look. <laughs> well, you've been warned. So here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bye. Welcome, everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bye. Yes, it is. And we have a great one for you today. Bye. Yes, indeed, brothers. Of course we do. Can't have the greatest show in the multiverse and not have a great show. Doesn't really work out that way. <laughs> look, look. Uh, that's my problem. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, resigned to the greatness. All right, all right. Let's get real. All right, guys. So, <laughs> okay, enough of that. All right, so look, let's see what we're talking about tonight. So first we got Vision. Food Gates connects China and France. And so you guys remember last year when we did the story about um about that big conference thing and Xi Jinping was there and uh and uh Emmanuel Macron was there and um they were both shilling to each other about about Chainlink, right? Macron was like, "Yo, we got this thing called Chainlink." And Xi Jinping was like, yeah, fuck stick, that's a Chinese company. That's what I'm trying to shill to you. Right? They were both shilling chain link to each other. Well, here's the results. So we're going to read about that. All right. And then chain link to the rescue. It's chain link to the rescue. So chain link on board is DEX Synthetics. And we're going to read about that to uh, provide oil future. Wait. I don't know about their futures, but oil numbers. No. We'll see what exactly kind of oil numbers they are. Oil data, you know what I mean? Look, look, off-chain oil data to the blockchain. So that's going to go down. And then Belarus's largest bank, bang, launches crypto exchange. Oh, well, crypto services and an exchange, I think. We'll get there when we get there. I don't remember. I read it yesterday. All right, look, look, and then shout out to Daily Summary. So let's proceed how we proceed, brothers and sisters, with a bar. And then we do a little bit of look, look. Bye. Yeah. All right, price of Bitcoin. What are we working with? Where's my pen? There we are. All right, price of Bitcoin. 16, whoops. 16, holy, this is all up in my grill. $16,159. When I left yesterday, we are at $16,253. We've gone down, uh, what is that, 97 bucks? Is that right? Wait. Oh, 94 bucks. Sorry. All right. Bye. All right, top 10 of the day, brothers, sisters. Look, look. You know what it is. It's the daggone usual bunch of miscreants around these parts. Look, top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Chainlink, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Polkadot, and Cardano. Let's look at what market moves of the day. Look, look, usual story, single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. NEM, seven seven points up. Nice. A few Uniswap. Ooh, almost 20 points up. Or percentage up. Single this up, single this down. VJain, look at you, VJain. Uh-huh. Single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Two. Single this up. All right, two single digits down. All right, let's see who lost money today. If you see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on sale. Bah! Oh, not much sales. Not many sales today. Oh, slim pickings. Slim pickings indeed. All right, then. Top 10 losers. Energy Web Token, Crypto.com Coin, Loop Ring, Cybervane, Filecoin, Decentraland, Wrap Bitcoin, Ren, uh, Bitcoin, and the Midas Touch Gold. Let's see who made money today. 
All right, there's some gains. Look, look, top 10 gainers. ABBC Coin, Sushi Swap, Uniswap, ThorChain, uh, DeckCred, Compound, Near Protocol, Nexo, VChain, and NEM. Bah! Look, look, let's look at the total market cap. See what we're working with around those parts. What am I going here? $464.4 billion. And when I left you yesterday, we're at 462 even. Uh, so we've gone up $2.4 in total market cap. But let's see, we're working on volume. Uh, 24 hour volume is $113.1 billion. And when I left you yesterday, we we're at $121 point billion. So uh, let's just call that $8 billion and keep it moving. Down $8 billion. Actually, I guess it's technically $7.4 billion. But or something like that. Whatever, man. Fuck it. Let's move on. Look, let's get to our stories. All right, what we got here? Bye. V chain. Food gates connects France with economic giant China. So, for those of you who've been on this channel, you know, uh, well, you were here last year, uh, and so we we remember that the um, what was it? It was like forty thousand. French companies were part of this uh, some sort of association, right? And they want to use VeChain on all their products. And so the, 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 the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, okay, so, there, so let me start from the beginning. There was a big trade convention in China last year. And so Macron, he brings his trade association to China, you know, to drum up business, you know, you got shill business, you know, drum up business. And Xi Jinping was there, right? Obviously, they went there to meet. And so uh, Emmanuel Macron is like, yeah, 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 you know, we've got all this food and this, this, this uh, what was he saying about the beef and the wine? Now, especially it was about beef and wine. I mean, there's lots of companies in this association, but he actually brought beef and wine that was on the VeChain blockchain. And he's telling uh, Xi Jinping, like, yes, look at our beef, look at our wine, it's very delicious, blah, blah, blah. And it's on this blockchain. And 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 Xi Jinping's like, oh, yeah, well, we've got this thing, it's called VeChain, it can help you out with that. And Macron is like, well, that's what we are using. <laughs> so they both went there to shill, and this is why uh, you should always be happy, so happy about VeChain is Xi Jinping himself, on that conference, literally invited... V chain to be part of it, like personally, like look, V chain, we want you to come and be part of this thing, this conference thing we're having, trade, uh, sorry, trade expo kind of thing, you know, a trade expo, and uh, and it ended up that he's shilling to France about V chain, and France is shilling to him about this beef that and wine that they had that was already just on that was on V chain, so so it turns out, so I guess this. And so there's like 40,000 companies or something. Maybe not 40. Maybe it was 4,000. That sounds a bit excessive. But anyways, there was a few thousand companies on this French, um, in a French, you know, trade union type thing, right? And so this is the culmination of what we talked about last year. This is it. So Food Gates connects France with economic giant China. And that's what it was all about, right? All right. So, right, it's cool to see, you know, a year ago, they got yap yapping about doing something together and then, bang, well, here we go. Here are the results. Here's the results. So, uh, let me get a sip and we shall proceed. All right, check it out. Okay, so as Crypto News Flash has already reported, VeChain partnered with the ASI Group at China International in Import Expo in 2019 last year. Oh, so that's the one. That's the expo. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was talking about. That's what we read about here last year. Um, trade solution on the VeChain Thor blockchain called Food Gates. The aim of the new platform is to monitor the origin of products along the value chain 
from the first step of production, such as cow selection, to meat packaging and shipping. So the usual bee chain traceability from farm to table, right? The same, the usual stuff. Um, at the beginning of food gates, mainly high quality, at the beginning of food gates, mainly high quality beef products will be tracked. But other products from the food and beverage industry will follow. So like we've talked about, well, like I said the other day, right? I could see some track where, I could see something where we have a two-tiered food system. You know, food that is traced and you can guarantee its quality. You know, so if you have some money, you can you can get your food guaranteed. And then food, uh, well, they call it beef, but are you sure? I don't know. Anyways, that's way down the road. But look, <clears throat> well, plus anyways. So um, tracked, but other products from the food and beverage industry will follow. According to the official press release, the first 10 officially tracked products will include beef and high-quality milk for children. Uh, the goods originate from France and are exported to China, thus linking the market participants from both countries. All products are tracked on the B-Chain Thor blockchain in real time and stored unalterable by scanning a QR code which is present on the packaging of the products Chinese buyers can read out all important information such as production location, date or weight, and validate the whoa, hiccup. And validate the authenticity of the products. So here's a little this looks like the app right here or something right here. All right. All right. So, more than 12 global companies from France have already joined the platform. And many more are in the pipeline, according to the announcement. So, 12 of them are on the platform. That's, bang, 12 onboardings for VeChain right there. This is a 12 for, <laughs> 12 pack. Uh, 12 pack of beer right here. So, more than 12 global companies have joined the platform. And many more are in the pipeline, according to the announcement. Uh, China is France's seventh largest trading partner. And last year, imported goods worth more than $30 billion. The bilateral trade volume reached a record high. And you know France has all that high-end food, right? Fine wines, fine cheeses, fine meats. It's very fine when you eat over there. Uh, the bilateral trade volume reached a record high of $100 billion in 2019. Furthermore, Chinese interest in high-quality goods. Oh, it says it right here. Interest in high-quality goods. Actually, France sells high-quality goods. You know, when it comes to food products has increased by more than 24.5% to a volume of more than $100 billion compared to the previous year. So with this in mind, John Krechi, oh, Trecky, CEO of the ASI Group and co-founder of Foodgates, said that current economic developments around the world require new innovation, such as Foodgates, to fully satisfy the needs of all stakeholders involved in the process. <laughs> aye, aye. The events of the last 12 months have definitely accelerated the revolution in international trade, and this proved Foodgates is on the right track. The global pandemic, closed borders, and the infeasibility, wait, infeasibility of buyers to physically meet producers are all elements that underlie need to invent a new model. All right. <laughs> don't, let a good, don't let a good crisis go to waste, buddy. So, all right, hold on, let me get a sip. <laughs> Uh, 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 don't let a good crisis go to waste. Milk this pandemic for all it's worth, boys. Milk it. We all did. <laughs> Shang Wei. Chief Executive Officer of the French company Le Maitre Letters to Contentin. To Contentin. Really? Shang Wei is the chief executive of a company named like that? They have a Chinese chief executive at a French company? That's pretty. Uh, well, the French are very. Um, how do you say this? They're very proud of their culture. They're very proud of themselves. And uh, I'm surprised they would let, a, you know, an outsider um, be something like this. All right. Anyways, anyways, forget about it. Um, like if you go to France, 
and you don't speak French, they look at you like you're an idiot. No, parlez-vous français? No français? Oh, j'adore. Right, like you're a fucking idiot. Idiot, I speak English like what the rest of the world speaks. Right, like English is the second language of the world. Right, but French people, they, <clears throat> because of their colonial behavior in northern, northern Africa and stuff, you know, they, I don't know, they have this thing. Anyway, but look, look, let's move on. <laughs> they come here. They'll come here to South Beach and act like you don't speak French. Why would the fuck would I speak French? I'm in South Beach, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Italians are the same way. All right, anyway, well, you know, we have a lot of Europeans here, so you meet real Europeans, you know, from Europe from yesterday, you know. They got here off the off the plane yesterday. You don't speak France? No Francais? No fucker, no Francais. English, motherfucker, English. <laughs> no English? No English? Yeah, I'll do that to them. When they ask me, like, I don't speak their language, like, no, idiot, I live in America. You're the idiot not speaking English coming here. All right, all right. I know. I, I've gotten angry at people about it. That's why. That's why it's a. That's how they are. They they're arrogant. Very arrogant when they come here. Some, 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 some. I'm not. I love them. I love them as a people. But some of their young men come here and you know just behave all crazy. All right, look. Uh, so anyway, so they do have an Asian. He's the CEO of. Uh, Le Maitre uh, Laitier de Contentin, a partner of Foodgates, stated that the blockchain will monitor all steps of milk production in a fraud-proof way. So thanks to Foodgates' blockchain ecosystem, we can follow all the stages of milk production, from processing and finished products, from storage and transport from France to China, until it is made available to the consumers by, by simply scanning the QR code printed on the carton. Yes. So, VeChain cooperates with Chinese government. <laughs> Obviously. So, just two days ago, it was announced that... Oh, we read this already. Anyway, we'll just read this quick part. Just two days ago, it was announced that VeChain had entered into a partnership with the, Chi the Chinese local government of Hubei to develop a uh, public health platform. We read about that here. As the VeChain Foundation states, this will contribute significantly to stimulate the economy after the pandemic. All right. So there you go, VeChain holders. Bye. And so this is a mega, though. Um, uh, we read it already, right? We read it before, but now this is the truth of it. It's happening, right? So we read about it last year that um, Xi Jinping and Macron were talking about it, right? At that conference. What was the name of that conference thing? The International China International Expo. Wait, here it is. China International Expo. Um, Import Expo. International Import Expo. Right? Remember, we read about it last year. And so this is the fruition of that. So I guess what I'm doing is I'm just showing you that, hey, guys, that shit that happened at that expo last year, bang, turned into something for VJ. <laughs> people talk, sh you know, people will talk at expos and all that. Yeah, but down you gotta you gotta wait till it, you know. Does it actually turn into something? You know, business guys are over there, all each you know handing each other their business cards and all that and all that. But you know, does anything come of it, right? And so uh, here it is, it came, and um, this is a mega, a mega um, the, the the this the, the um. All right, let me slow down. <laughs> the French. It's a French association. They have over 40,000 companies that are, are willing to line up and start using VeChain for different... Well, so first of all, let me put it this way. There's two things. There's the the, China, the French people that want to sell their stuff to China, but then there's these French guys that just want to use the VeChain thing just in general, right? Like just, yeah, we just want to have that. That's cool. So this is the fruition of it. Uh, there it is. Bang. It's called Floodgates. It's called Floodgates, right? Like VeChain's other food thing is, oh, Food Gates, my bad. Food Gates. Was I saying Floodgates the whole time? Sorry, guys. Food Gates. Did I say? F so anyways, that's it, man. That's that's mega. And that's it, baby. China, man. So you're just it's just going to grow and grow and grow. All right, let's move on. Bang! DX Synthetics now allows trading of Brent crude oil powered by Chain link to the rescue. 
Chainlink to the rescue. Look, look. Look, boy. You got a blockchain. It's got no data on it and it's such a pain. You're looking down and you're looking fucking blue. You're looking daggone stink. Well, settle down, boy. Call Chainlink. They'll come to the rescue. <laughs> Chain link to the rescue. <laughs> so look, look. DX Synthetics was looking a little down. They want to offer a little Brent crude offering. They said, dag on, how are we going to do this? We can't do it. We can't do it. Look, look. Call Chain Link, boy. Chain link to the rescue. So, <laughs> all right, all right. So seriously. <laughs> oh. And did you hear that the Zeus Capital crew is back again? So I found out a little bit about Zeus Capital yesterday. So do you know that Zeus Capital started shorting Chainlink at $5? So I was always wondering, like, where did they start shorting it at, right? Like, were they shorting it at, like, $7, $8 and hoping it? So Zeus Capital actually started shorting Chainlink at $5. And obviously, yeesh, for them, that didn't work. And it looks like they're trying another short attack. They're offering $100,000 to anyone who can prove that Chainlink is manipulating the price of their coin. So they're pulling a Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump right now, they're offering a million dollars to anyone who can prove that there was some big voter fraud thing, right? Obviously, there wasn't, and that's why no one's collected that. If, if you could do that, you would have fucking taken the million bucks, right? And so uh, that's what Chainlink is doing. They're offering 100 grand to anyone who could prove that Chainlink is manipulating price. <laughs> look, look. Holy, what a bunch of fucking losers. So they're trying to short sell it. But I just thought it was funny. I wanted to tell you guys because, you know, I've, obviously we want to know, well, if you're going to short Chainlink, where were you shorting it from, right? Like, where did you put in your money at to make it go down? Like, you know, you have to buy it a certain, well, you have to short at some price, right? So their price when they started shorting was $5. Hold on. Let's look at Chainlink right now. What is it? I think it's like 12 bucks or something, isn't it? 12, 13 bucks or something. <laughs> we got to look at this. <laughs> fucking Zeus Capital. Fucking losers. Ah, there it is. <laughs> $12.72. You know, uh, what a fucking, that's the worst short ever. Not only, not only did it not short, but they more than doubled up. <laughs> so guys, everybody, if you want to know about Zeus Capital, yeah, they, they started shorting Chainlink at $5. And actually, they're actually back. They came out with a new... Oh, sorry, sorry. I just told you that. Right. They came out with a new thing where they're trying to offer someone hundred grand to prove... That can prove that Chainlink is manipulating the price. That's their new attack on Chainlink. And, uh, well, you're, and I don't really want to say this, but I will say this just because... Wow. It's out there. You know what some people are saying? Some people are saying that Zeus Capital isn't real, that it's really just Chainlink pretending that there's some group shorting them so that their, their, their Link Marines or whatever you call them will buy more to fuck up that company. Anyway, that's total conspiracy nonsense. I, I shouldn't have even brought that up. That's so stupid. But anyway, Zeus Capital, look, look, getting fucked. Now, though, now let's get to the reality, though. So look at what they're offering, though. Brent crude oil prices. And so, bang, that's sweet. That's sweet. Real prices. Real, I, no, sorry, sorry. I, let me use the word properly. Prices not just of crypto stuff. You know, the price of Bitcoin to a, a blah, blah, blah. You know, the price of an Ethereum to a blah, blah, blah. But real prices of real world assets. Oil, Brent crude oil. And so, that's awesome. This is awesome. Um, you know, real assets out here like this. Not just um, crypto stuff. Not just crypto assets. Well, let me say it properly. Not just digital assets. All right? And let me get a sip and then we'll proceed. Look! Chaining to the rescue. All right, here we go. Popular D5 product, DEX Synthetics.
now allows the crypto market to trade Brent crude oil as well. Bye. Soil, synthetics Brent crude oil, is a non-expiring crude oil index based on the futures prices of ice Brent crude oil, whose price is tracked through price feeds supplied by the Chainlink Oracle, which will source the data from ICE for an undisclosed price. Okay, so basically Chainlink is going to put ICE's futures contract price, oil futures contract uh, prices on, what is it? Synthetics network for them. Uh, which will source the data from ICE for an undisclosed price, so they're not telling us how much they're going to pay for it. So Soil is a great case study showcasing that DeFi developers are on the precipice of going far beyond cryptocurrency price feeds and starting to create financial products that provide exposure to food, energy, resources, look, look, rare earth metals, real-world assets, equities, NFTs, weighted asset baskets, and much more, said the Chainlink official. Bye! So I told you. That is what I told you. Now we're going to get Chainlink giving real, real data. Uh, not not that the this crypto crap ain't real, but let's get fucking real. Where Earth's data, real world assets, equities. Yes. Yes. That's, if you're a Chainlink hodler, that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to hear. Let's get real. All of this shit is going to be blockchain soon. Well, you're going to need somewhere, somewhere to get your data. Chainlink. Chainlink. I'll say it again. Chainlink. <laughs> Look, that's a threefer. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We want Chainlink to give more than just crypto crap data. Give data, you know, to the real world, to the the real financial world, like, you know, that I live in, you know. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Exactly. Exactly. You guys know about rare earths, huh? You guys know about rare earths? Yeah, rare earths. That's some serious shit. You know, rare earths. It's in all our cell phones and computers. Uh, well, they are. The rare earths are rare earths. <laughs> rare uh, substances on earth. Like they have weird names like quintum zinium and shit like this, right? Yeah. China controls 70% of that market. You know if China cut off the rare earths? We would go to war. Yeah, do you know that? If China were to cut off the rare earths, okay. Let me let me let me say you, let me tell you guys something. But here's a little insider thing. Um, when 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 Trump started the trade war with China, you know he 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 put the tariffs on all the you know normal shit, and China said, okay, we're going to put tariffs on your stuff too. So China did a retaliatory tariff. Um, regime against us and then china for one day they 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 threatened to cut off rare earths from america yeah yeah, yeah. the next day they retracted that they were like no 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 don't worry don't worry yeah because we will go to war for that we will go to war for rare earths rare earths are used in all your cell phones and computers but you know what else they're used in is guidance missile systems uh radar systems for our stealth fighters um aircraft carriers every in in your, in your in our military stuff right uh, and and uh if they, if they if they were to cut that off we'd go to war and go just go take those yeah china it's a it's not a known really big known story i mean if you're a market guy like me you know about the story but for you people you wouldn't under you wouldn't have heard about it but yeah china for one second there xi jinping was like oh yeah We'll cut off rare earths. Yeah, and, and I bet they heard from our generals and our ambassadors and everything and said, look, you want to do that? Well, uh, shit will be going down. We'll let you play around in the South China Sea. We'll let you talk shit about us. But if you're going to cut off rare earths from us, the reason they're called rare earths is because <laughs> they really are rare. Right, I always tell you guys, right? People always say, oh, gold and silver and diamonds, they're they're expensive because they're rare. They're not fucking rare. You can find them all over the place, man. Rare earths really are rare. Really are. Like, they are super about Google it. Google rare earths. And China has 70% of the world's rare earths on their territory. 
They could cut off the whole world if they felt like it. And that's how vital it is. It, your computer won't work. Your laptop won't work. Uh, sorry, your phone won't work. Our guidance systems for our missiles and our, it's very, it's used big time in military. Won't work. You can't do it. And it's something uh, that, you know, people will go to war over that. <laughs> you know, people are always saying, yeah, America's over in the Middle East just because of the oil, just because of the oil. Uh, you want to you want to know what would really be? We, we we're not over there because of oil. We're just over there, just romping around, just being a bunch of dicks. You know, America's with their dicks hanging out. But I tell you what, if China ever said, "Yeah, we're not giving you guys any rare earths," nah, we'd go to fucking war, fucking war <laughs> over that. And even Xi Jinping was like, "All right, all right, my bad, my bad. I I shouldn't have brought that up." <laughs> yeah, Xi Jinping backs down from nobody. But when it came to the rare earth talk, yeah, 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 he he understood he crossed that red crossed the red line with that kind of talk. <laughs> anyway, that's just a little insider thing for everyone in the markets. Like market guys, when we heard it, we were all like, "What?" Because we know what it means, right? We know the importance, and we know the importance of China in that market space. We're all like, "Get the fuck!" Yeah, and then the next day he was like, "No, no, 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 no." We were. We, we're not going to do that. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah, even Xi Jinping. All right, guys. So there's a little insider, a little fun stuff to look at. But anyway, let's get back to uh, synthetics and. Oh, yeah. Chain link to the rescue. <laughs> yeah. Chain link couldn't rescue Xi Jinping from that rare earth talk. Look. So look. <laughs> when he threatened that shit. Look, look. America said, look, homeboy. Well, the Europeans need it too. Everybody does. So when he threatened that kind of stuff, everybody was just like, look, we just keep those rare earths flowing. Because we'll build a coalition like no other Ugh. to get those. All right? People think we go to war over oil. No one goes to war over oil anymore. That's old school. Rare earths, we will go to war. Oh, yeah, we will drop some bombs. Because they're so rare. All right. Uh, so the token prices are blah, 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 blah. We don't do prices around here. Yeah, the prices will be the price of when the fucking institutions get here. I don't care about them right now. It's little retail fuckery prices. So look, with the addition of one of the major futures contracts for global oil markets, a real world asset, has officially entered the DeFi trading world. Bye! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want Chainlink to do. I want Chainlink to start bringing real world, not just crypto crap. Well, I really like them to bring real world asset numbers to real world companies, but fine. If it's the DeFi world, we'll take it for now. But oh yeah, oh yeah, we're going good. We're going good here, people. Chainlink holders, accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Look, wouldn't hurt. Recently, crypto's derivatives exchange FTX also provided the crypto market exposure to stocks like Apple, Google, Tesla, and Amazon. All right. Well, well, and so I guess since, well, Shamar, you got so happy about the oil thing. Well, there you go. And I'm also happy about the Apple, Google, Tesla, and Amazon. Exactly. Real world assets, other assets, not just the digital assets. That's what we want to see Chainlink doing. Well, that's what I want to see. So there's a significant demand for these assets, particularly given the liquidity of the underlying markets and the difficulty of access for average traders. Notes the SIP 62. Futures reference price methodology, which is about converting futures market prices into a single reference price for synths. Wait, what is this fuck stick saying? Hold on, hold on. Let me read this again. There's significant demand for the for these assets, particularly given the liquidity of the underlying markets and the difficulty of access for the average trader. No, it says, it says futures reference price methodology. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. About converting the futures prices into a single reference price. Okay, right, right, right. So, again, so, yeah. Um, let me try to simplify this. Look, man, they're just going to give the futures price, uh, the, the crude oil futures prices 
to this Oracle thing, man. Don't worry about it, man. It's not a big deal. Just know that it's really good, man. Uh, according to Chainlink, this is just the beginning. As compared to DeFi's 13 billion TVL, the global market for crude oil is over 1.7 trillion. Look! Not including derivatives market. And that's what I'm talking about. Fuck, just fuck. I love DeFi and all. I don't love DeFi, but I mean, DeFi is here and bang, bang, bang. But look, 13 billion in the, what is it called? Total value locked. Isn't that how these DeFi guys define their little thing right there? Yeah, well, fuck that. We want real markets with buy big numbers. And that's beautiful. Chainlink is doing that. Chainlink is expanding out from just the crypto market and actually servicing. Well, let me put it this way. Servicing blockchain platforms, smart contracts, and distributed apps with um, non-crypto data. And that's great. That's great. Because, I mean, eventually, you know, a lot of people will be probably trading on smart contracts. A lot of people will be trading through distributed apps soon, right? The, the whole world is changing. You know, the whole landscape of how we interact with the goody room is changing and so for you who don't understand the goody room is the markets the markets the goody room is um a place where a man can take his money deploy his money deploy his capital and receive roi a return on that investment so any asset out here that a man can take his money put down on it wait a little while and get money back that's called the goody room guys so the goody room <laughs> look look kong show us some goody room maybe i'll d d I'll, I'll tweet that tonight so that's what the goody room is in other words the markets i am a member of the goody room my money makes me money right i don't have a nine to five job look at my face does it look like i have a nine to five job i don't have a nine to five job my money makes me money and um <laughs> and a lot of us are like that out here in the world and so uh you know, that's the goody room, okay? Do you understand the goody room? And that's what I'm trying to get you to become. Right now, I know you're a worker bee, but I'm trying to turn you into a killer bee who's going to make money in the goody room for the rest of your life once the tsunami comes, all right? That's kind of the, the project mission here. <laughs> that's kind of the whole thing. That's what we're doing around these parts. All right, let you be goody room, you know? You know? Uh, goody room tenants of the goody room hanging out with us here all right so lock fox stick let's move so look traditional financial markets are orders of magnitude larger than cryptocurrency markets exactly bond orders of magnitudes larger than the crypto markets crypto market is what oh actually i have the number right here i'm an idiot hold on <laughs> yeah 464 billion dollars there are hedge funds with more money than that. And then this whole market. Fidelity Investments could buy this whole fucking market 25 times over. Every single coin, every single token. <laughs> 25 times over. This is a tiny shithole. Little, little market right now. But it's professionalizing with stuff like this. With stuff like this, where you're getting real data from the real boys, Ugh, the Wall Street boys, bye, London boys. Oh, yeah, don't fucking fuck with those London boys, the Japanese boys, New York, London, and Tokyo, bye. All right, the three biggest markets in the world. Well, the three biggest places where the big boys play in the world. And so, uh, this is great. This is great. And DeFi has only begun to scratch the surface of tapping into it. And, you know, I told you guys I thought this DeFi thing was a bunch of bullshit. I'm still not convinced. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm not convinced about <laughs> how big this thing is going to be. But, you know, they're offering other instruments and stuff like that. Look at here. Crude oil. Crude oil, baby. I mean, that's the real deal. That's the real shit. I got to talk like an adult. That's, you know... um, well, Brent crude oil obviously is the foundation of all of society. <laughs> if we didn't have Brent crude oil, 
we wouldn't even have the society that we live in today, right? And so uh, if you kind of want to look at it, extrapolate out, if you want to extrapolate out like that. Um, so back. All right, let's just go on, though. But So look, look. Chain link to the rescue. Bang. All right, let's move on. Bang. Look, look. Belarus's largest bank reportedly launches crypto exchange service. Now, bang, bang, bang. This is what I'm talking about. Here come the banksters. All right, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about, brothers. Look, look, sisters. Yeah. Don't worry, ladies. I haven't forgotten about you. Look. That's how it goes. This is how it's going to go down. Here come the banksters, finally. Here come the fucking banksters. Here in America, we have an office. One beautiful, golden, pretty little agency called the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's glorious. It's fabulous. Yes, it's, it's fabulous. And the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency here in America said, look, look, all you American banks, bang, you can cuss these in crypto now. Wow. Look, look, look. That was the most beautiful. <laughs> that was the most beautiful regulatory. <laughs> That was the most beautiful regulatory thing to ever happen to this space. Oh, yeah. To happen to this whole crypto space, this international crypto space, digital, uh, digital ledger technology space, or digital asset class. Yeah, there, let's say it that way. Most beautiful thing. Once the Americans said, <laughs> uh -huh. we're going to unleash our banksters. Wow. Look, look. Everybody knows how greedy Americans are. Everybody knows how powerful Americans are. And uh, once that order came down, well, let's get real. That basically told the world. Crypto's real. Start banking it. Start custodying it. Get on board. Now, the world caught that signal. All right? Once the Americans did it. Right? It's like anything, it's like anything, 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 you know? People look at LeBron James, they look at what shoes he's wearing. And then they want to wear the shoes LeBron wore, right? Or they, they look at the dress Taylor Swift was wearing. And all the little girls want to, you know, wear that same dress, that little Versace dress or whatever she was wearing, right? Oh, well, it's the same thing. America fucking put on crypto custody of their banksters. Now everyone's rocking and rolling. Bang! And that's what I told you. That that OCC announcement. That was basically um, the green light for the world. Um, it's on. You know, it's on. Uh, crypto is real. Crypto is here to stay. Um, and, uh, well, act accordingly, <laughs> you know, act accordingly, behave yourself accordingly. And so like we read, we read about that Indian bank. What was that last Saturday? Actually, let's take a peek at what we've looked at. Let's take a little fucking peek. That's why I ran it down. That's why I write my shit down, because I like to look at uh, historical data. Let's take a peek. All right. JP Morgan stablecoin went live. Bye. Yeah. What does that tell the world? Oh, my gosh. Even JP Morgan is in? <laughs> Not only are they in on custody, they're creating their own fucking stablecoin, dang on. <laughs> look, look. Kasha. Is opening 22 physical, this is the one I was talking to you about, 22 physical crypto banks in India. 22. Bang! Remember that? Remember we read about India? You're going to be able to walk into the bank in India, give them a couple of G, they're going to give you some fucking Bitcoin. Bang! Yeah, you're going to buy it right from the bank. 
What else we got here? Oh, here we go. On uh, November 29th, Fidelity expands to Asia. Look, look. That's a different thing. That's not banking, so let's move on. All right. What else we got? What else we got? What else we got around these parts? Look, look. Oh, the Mongolian bank offering crypto services. We talked about that on uh, November 3rd. Bye. Oh, and then another bank. Oh, the OCC guy talked about it. Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But the Mongolian bank coming. What else we got? Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Remember, we talked about the Fidelity. Fidelity. Hiring crypto engineers. Right? Getting ready to launch new crypto products. Look, look. 401k. Look, look. IRAs. Look, look. College savings funds. And remember, they're moving all the way around the world. What else we talked about? Oh, that's right. And this bank. Remember the Swiss bank? Bye. Offering staking for Tezos. Look, look, Fox Sticks. Look, look, Fox Sticks. Here come the banksters. What else do we read about, guys? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Oh, oh. Oh, well, one thing that's interesting. Yeah, this Fox Stick Biden. Now, this old crusty fuck. <laughs> he's got he's got two crypto guys on his team. Ooh, remember we read about that. All right, and that's enough. That's enough. Well, that's it. But you see what I'm saying? Here come the banksters. Here come. I want to get this in your mind. I want you to get this. I want you to understand, you know, like uh, the importance that it, you know, the infrastructure was one thing in terms of the, um, well, the beginnings, custody, you know, just custodying crypto, you know, holding it. All right, we're past that now. We're, we have custody providers now. Now, so now that the banksters have custody providers, well, look, look, now the banksters are actually offering crypto. And more important than that, now that the OCC in America unleashed all American banks, Okay, so there's two things. Well, there's two races in the world. There's the blockchain race where China, Xi Jinping, you know, he's blockchaining up China, you know, just all, just all, you know, just blockchaining up the whole place. And I'm going to read to you about that. That's a national security issue, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And also a financial economy issue. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So we have two tracks. We have the blockchain track, which is securing up the vital systems of a country, your your intelligence organizations, your military, blah, 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 like that, right? And, but then we have the crypto part of it, which is these little tokens that you and I are invested in, <laughs> right? These uh, public, what are they called? Public permissionless blockchains, right? Tokenized public permissionless blockchains. And that's the other world. And that world, uh, now the banksters are coming to our world and, uh, well, eh, you're witnessing the beginning of a new reality. You know, the beginning of a new reality where banks are going to be offering, you know, fiat services, but uh, digital, digital, uh, digital asset services are, are, beginning, are, are beginning to come online. And uh, let me tell you, within five years... Uh, every bank account is going to offer custody service. Like what Justin, our brother Justin here, Justin Williams, he's been telling us for a few years, you know, uh, you're going to have a, <laughs> a Bitcoin checking account soon. You're going to have a Ethereum savings account soon. Like those are going to be standard. Those are going to be standard, you know, and uh, and here it is. Banks. Uh, we've been reading about them, like I just showed you about. Them. All right, all right. Let me get a sip. But that's what's happening. And so, you know, um, hmm. I guess what? Uh, so, you know, um, um, 
I know, I keep saying this shit, but it's the truth. If you can get some BTC, I would it just, it's not advice. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I don't, you know, this isn't a financial advice show, but BTC and Ethereum are going to go first. And, uh, you know, um, well, holding those two right there, that'll really, that's going to pump your portfolio wildly, wildly, wildly. All right, so let me get a sip and then we'll move on. All right. Look. Belarus Bank, the largest financial institution in Belarus. <laughs> oh, they're having a shit show over in Belarus. But anyways, is reportedly launching a cryptocurrency exchange service. Bye. The bank itself. You see what the OCC did? Once they said American banks, bang, bang, bang. Well, now every bank, all the banksters of the world are now trying to quickly offer services and, and shit. Not in shit. Let's talk like an adult. You know, offer savings and services for the customers. Uh, because they know, well, because also, let's let's look at it this way. If I'm a Belarusian bank, all right, look, look, let me let me put it this way, sorry. I'm Bank of America. Uh, bang, 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 I offer Bitcoin custody. In other words, and, uh, and then my, my customers can use Bitcoin, move it around, blah, 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 like that. Yeah, well, if I'm a Belarusian bank, I want to have my customers to be able to have Bitcoin because what if one of my Bitcoin customers want to interact with any of your Bitcoin customers. Do you see what I'm saying? America's unleashing all their banks. So banksters around the world in other countries want to make sure that their customers can interact with the fucking new reality that America's throwing down, right? And they want to offer the service. I mean, obviously you want to offer the service because, well, your customers are going to demand that service. You know, they're going to demand that, you know, like... I mean, let's not fool ourselves, you know. 99% of people in the world don't even know what crypto and digital assets or anything is yet. Yet. But once these once these banksters and everyone starts using stuff and doing stuff, um, and let's get real. I'm going to tell you the truth. Once, once... Once these small caps get regulated, that's when you're going to see advertising and everything all over the fucking world. Until then, it's probably going to be just these insiders, the banksters, and you know people like you and me who already just kind of know, making money off of this stuff. But eventually, they're going to, well, these banksters want money. They're going to advertise, you know, holding your Cardano's for you, you know, like here in America, Cardano's an American company uh, and it's digital technology, it's digital asset. Um, they'll offer that too, right? It, th eventually, they're going to offer all of it to hold it and transfer between each other and all this. But, um, you know, all right, all right, let's move on, let's move on. I'm trailing off into fucking crazy shit. All right, look. Well, not crazy, it's going to happen, but just let's deal with the here and now. So according to a November report by local news agency Prime Press, Belarus Bank is rolling out a service allowing users to exchange cryptocurrency using Visa payment card. Also, oh, sorry, sorry, as reported, the new service enables trading crypto against fiat currencies like the Belarusian ruble, as well as the United States dollar and the euro. So, they're offering a debit card in crypto, and they're offering—they're also allowing you to trade crypto against 
the Belarusian ruble, the United States dollar, and the euro. All right. So Belarus Bank executives reportedly said that the launch of the new crypto service comes in line with the company's digital transformation program that was announced a few years ago. The new service is reportedly available to citizens of Belarus and Russia. So if you're a Russian, look, look, you get to have it too. The bank is also planning to extend the list of countries supporting the service as well as the list of supported cryptocurrencies in the near future. Oh, so they're going to expand out, let other countries use it, and they're also going to add other cryptos to it. Nice, the report notes. So according to the report, the new features is a result of Belarus Bank's partnership with local crypto payment operator Whitebird. Prior to introducing the new service, the two companies reportedly partnered to jointly explore the crypto industry in 2018. Nice. So Belarus Bank is apparently one of the first banks in Belarus pushing its own crypto service. Exactly. See, and that's the thing. You've got all these countries out there and all their banksters have seen what the OCC has done here in America. So they're jumping on board. They're jumping on board because let's get real. Let's get real. Even if your country, maybe your country's leader isn't so pro-crypto or the, the legislature, the legislators, the, the politicians, they're called legislators. Your legislators aren't uh, so gung-ho. Well, you're going to be left behind. You see, once America did that, it, it allowed banksters and these kind of guys to, you know, put pressure on the legislators to fucking write laws to let's get her done. Right. Uh, you know, to pass, you know, you call it pro crypto, whatever. I don't call it pro crypto. Just to just get it done, you know, to get what is going to be the reality of the future. Let's go. You know, uh, it's not pro or anti. That's the, the crypto is the future and uh, stuff like that. And so anyway, look, the development of crypto business in Belarus has been encouraged by local crypto friendly regulation. Oh, so they've got crypto-friendly regulation. Nice. So, as previously reported, Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko signed a draft decree legalizing the use of digital currencies in late 2017. Oh, he did? Bang! All right, well, you obviously know that he's under siege right now. <laughs> but anyway, we won't talk about the civil, civil war to erupt. Let's just talk about Belarus's largest bank reportedly launches crypto exchange service. Bang! There we go. There we go, and that's what is going down. Once the OCC here in America said, look, look. Well, every country, every country's ready now, right? It's the, uh, that was the, that was the thumbs up. You know, like in the movie, uh, what, well, Gladiator, right? You got the, you got the, the Caesar, and he goes, you know, like, yes. Or he goes, look, look, right? Well, that's what everyone was waiting for. They were waiting for the Caesar. The Caesar is America. The Caesar is, his name is Uncle Sam. <laughs> and Uncle Sam said, look. <laughs> and Uncle Sam said, look. Well, the world knows now. The world knows now. And here they come. All right, let's move on. Look, let's move on. Bang. What we got around these parts? Yeah, so these daggone miscreants here. Sloppy. On boards of what now? I think he's talking about, oh, the Cardano thing. On boards of beef thing. A beef tracking thing, brother. Look, look, nice tender beef. Bang. Love you, Sloppy. See you, Sloppy. <laughs> Hold down the northern insurgency. Bang. Yes. We got Edwin Dickel, the Dickel family. Yes. Family crypto scale stays together. Bang. Let everybody keep it up. Bang. Look, look, Lorna. Look, look. You're yes, sweetie. Yes, look at the portfolio. Nice, fat, juicy, ready. Yes. Bang! Ready for the tsunami. Yes. She ain't playing games. Look, look. Love you, Lorna. See you, Lorna. Detroit in the house. Yes. Bang! What we got? BDM. Let me see with a bang. You know I do. We got a oh, bunch of miscreants right here. Sunny B, Spy Lady. Yes, got her UBI ready. Got her locked, cocked, and ready to rock. Love you, spy lady. See you, spy lady. Don't be spying on me. Bye. 
You can spy on me if you want. Look, look, DP. So, brother. Love, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Whoops. Got to give him the proper. Bye. There we go. Oh, Got to hit him in the head. Got to hit him. Got to hit him. Can't just let him escape. Richard, Andrew Vicheta, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. <laughs> Lorna. I love Lorna. Oh, hey, we got another Piggy Wee. Oh, that's Piggy Wee from last night? Well, fuck it. Let's look, look. Let's turn on the Piggy Wee. <laughs> Unleash the Piggy. Look, look. Boom. V Chain, Food Gates, connects China and France. Boom. Chain Link, onboards DX Synthetics. Boom. Belarus, largest bank, largest crypto exchange. Boom. Shamari talks about some crypto and he's talking, talking. Look, look, Piggy Wiggy. Boom. Get that chicken. <laughs> Get a chicken, Piggy. Boom. <laughs> yes. Got some Piggy Wiggy and some boom, boom, boom. All right. It's good enough. That is good enough. Let's. Bah. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back to the Death Star. Look. Had a good, good show today. Oh, yeah. Of course. It's crazy. The multiverse. Great show. Look. Yeah, send it with a little piggy wiggy. Look. <laughs> I can't stop that. Right? They 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 show her jumping in and then they, they show the nuclear thing. <laughs> That's I I know, it's so stupid. But I, oh my gosh, that makes you laugh so much, man. That makes you laugh so much. Fuck. That's a good, that's a good. <laughs> yes. Oh, holy shit. That's just a good correlation right there, y'all. Huh? It's a big old piggy wee with a boom. But what's the funniest part about the piggy wee thing, though? Hold on, let's go back to piggy wee. Hold on, because I, I have to explain, because now I'm embarrassed. I've been laughing my ass off, so I have to explain why I love Piggy Wiggy so much. Hold on. Because <laughs> I have tears in my eyes. Oh, my gosh. Because you see, what makes Piggy Wiggy... Wait, where was that? Oh, there it is. Hold on, can you guys see this? All right, here we go. You see, what makes Piggy Wiggy so funny is this part right here. Boom! It's not that she's a fat Piggy Wiggy. But look at the explosion and look at the fucking ships. So look at the explosion and look at the size of the ship. <laughs> That's what makes it so funny because you get the, the perspective, the size perspective. All right, all right, over the size of the blast. All right, all right. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. All right, let's. All right, I'm wasting people's time. All right, let's go back. Back. Here I am. Am I here? All right, I'm here. All right, all right. All right, guys, we had a great show for you. All the way. Oh, wiggy. All right, so look. We had a great show for you today. Settle down, Shemari. Settle down, boys. We're having too much fun now with Piggy Wiggy. Settle down. Let's get back to work. All right, so V-Chain. Food Gates connects China and France, and so that's that. It, well, it, something came of it, right? That was the thing that we read last year. Uh, when Macron and uh, Xi Jinping got together at that um, that fucking little conference, I just showed you the name of blah 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 conference 2019, and here we go, results, you know, produced results, and so uh, and you know just another onboarding for V Chain, so bar, and then uh, so for V Chain holders, bar, there you go, gotta slap you with a bang, yes. let you know I love you. <laughs> So look, Chainlink onboards DEX Synthetics. Well, that's great. That's great. But what was beautiful about this one is it's not just crypto numbers. It's crude oil. So now they're giving them real numbers from the real fucking world, from the real trading world. And so that's what I really like about this one. I mean, all the Chainlink onboardings are great. Well, all the Chainlink onboardings are generating revenue let's just put it that way i don't know how great they are but they all generate revenue but this one what i like and just as a chain link holder myself as you guys all know 
Um, holy, that that created tears in my eyes, the Piggy Wiggy part. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, you know, what's I want to see Chainlink providing, you know, just other data, not just crypto data. And so, um, holy, I had a tear go all the way down on my lip right here. I feel the water. Um, Chainlink is providing the... Um, the oil, Brent crude oil, that's the real, that's, doesn't get more real than the oil numbers in, in the world, I'll tell you that. And so that's great. And uh, I'd like to see them continue on this path of not just crypto numbers, but, um, but um, you know, real numbers from the real world. Uh, oil, uh pork bellies, uh, oranges, uh, soybeans, whatever, whatever. Because, oh, no, no, that's what I want to say. Because other, other, um, you know, eventually, all right, so this is fantasy. What I'm about to tell you is my own Shamari Clark fantasy. So this is not real or anyone saying it. I'm just going to tell you what I think. You know, there's going to be a lot of people offering the same services that they get now, but through distributed ledger technology, through a blockchain, right? And, um, and so we have oil futures, we have soybean futures, we have oranges futures, we have pork belly futures. I'm just talking futures now, but expand it out from there. And so you're gonna need that data and that's gonna be great. That's gonna be, a, eventually, Well, let me just say it this way. Eventually, perhaps, um, those kind of commodities, a lot of them will be traded on the blockchain. And so, chain link. Bang. All right, all right. Let's get out of here. I don't want to get too deep because I was about to get really deep. Like, listen, guys. All right, all right. I don't want to bore anyone. So, Belarus's largest bank, largest crypto exchange. Bang. So, there it is. There it is. The banksters. The banksters. Since the OCC, look, look, bye. Since the OCC launched that shit, yeah. Well, banksters around the world know now. Fuck stick. Shit's getting real. Shit's getting real. And so, like we read, I just listed you all that. Um, that's getting real, and um. Well, they're offering the services to their customers, to their clients. And, um, you know, like I said, like like Justin used to tell us, Justin was telling us this from 2000, not telling us, I mean, it was obvious, but I mean, he used to say it a lot, you know, just. Yeah, in a few years, you're going to have a Bitcoin savings account. You're going to have a fucking Ethereum checking account. Of course, it'll be for the first adopters at the beginning, people like you and I, if you want to do it. But eventually, 10 years from now, standard procedure. Like, it's it's not going to be even a thing that you think is a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, you're not even, a, it's just, you know. And so, uh, all right, great for crypto, great for you and me, great for the multiverse. All right, let's chill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bye. So subscribe below, press this bell. You will get an automatic notification when I do the show. Yes. Uh, hold on. My name is Smart. Hold on. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. Great show on earth, great show the multiverse. Look, my name is Smart Clock. Love talking money. Bye. Love talking crypto. Bye. This is the favorite time of my day. So look, thanks for having me in your home. And I will see you tomorrow. So until then, watch this video here. Press that bell. Bang. Get the notification. Watch that video here. Bang. Greatest of the multiverse. Get your mind right. And I'll see you all tomorrow. So look. My name is Shamari Clark. Always watching our money. Yes. Bang. And always on duty. <laughs> Fucking right, fuckstick. <laughs> Over and out.